it's met with Matthew. So go pick up your shoes. Increase your worldview. It's Matt with Matthew. On this episode, we welcome Zach McIntyre, Alex Swanson, Scott Robillard, and Leah Gaffney. And now your host, Chelmsford's Mathematics Coordinator, Dr. Matthew May Rodemar! X equals three. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Math with Matthew. I'm your host, Dr. Matthew Bayronimo. The... Uh, that's not right. Uh, that's not right either. That looks good, but that's not me. Now, where was I? Ah, uh, yes. I'm Dr. Matthew Bayronavon, the Mathematics Department Coordinator for the Chelmsford Public Schools. We will once again be doing three shows this season with a focus on each of the three levels, high school, middle school, and elementary school. This show will focus on all of the things math at the high school. In preparing for the second season of the show, I wanted to find out who was actually watching the show. For those that have not watched it, I wanted to give them a sales pitch on the show. And for those special few that have watched the show, I wanted to find out their feedback on the show. Let's take a look at Open House at Chelmsford High School. We are here with Mr. and Mrs. Sobian. So have you folks ever watched the TV show Math with Matthew? No, we haven't. <laughs> Can't say that we have. What if I told you there's a TV show about a Chelmsford mathematician who sings Beatles songs change the lyrics and make it about math. Sing along at home. All you need is math. No you way. Be <laughs> really <Wow>. cool. <laughs> yes, definitely. Mr. Knight, have you ever watched the TV show Math with Matthew? Unfortunately, no. I've never seen Math with Matthew. What if I told you there's a TV show about a Chelmsford mathematician standing on the pyramids of Egypt reporting everything Chelmsford mathematics? Would you be interested? I believe I would. Excellent. We are here with Tanoush and Sophia. Have either of you two ever watched the TV show Math with Matthew? Uh, I'm going to have to confess that I have not. Sorry. No, neither have I. What if I told you there is a TV show that features the math coordinator dressed up as Elphaba from the show Wicked? Would that interest you in watching? Yeah, that would be pretty interesting. I'd love to see that. Oh, definitely. We're here with Mr. Levesque, Chelmsford High School parent. Tell me, sir, have you ever heard of the TV show Math with Matthew? I haven't. You haven't? No. What if I told you there was a TV show that featured the Chelmsford math coordinator getting kids to do their homework on an island? Would you be interested? I, I would, but if it's on the same time as Family Guy, I probably wouldn't watch it. We are here with Mrs. O'Donnell. Mrs. O'Donnell, have you watched the show Math with Matthew? I have. Really? Can you tell me what's your impression of the show? I think it's very informative. It's great to be able to know what's going on with the curriculum here at Chelmsford High School and throughout the district. This is unbelievable. The first viewer we've actually had that's watched Math with Matthew. Thank you so much. <laughs> we are here, here with Chelmsford High School parent Ann McCarthy TIS, Mrs. V. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Baranovan. So tell me, have you ever seen the show Math with Matthew? Well, yeah, sort of. Well, what do you think of the show? Is it any good? Uh, it's okay. I like literature with Linda better. Sorry. That was a lot of fun doing that. On this episode of Math with Math, we welcome our math team coaches and a student to the show. We meet some of Chelmsford High School math teachers who were graduates of Chelmsford High School. And we will learn about our AP statistics program at the high school. Let's now begin by meeting all of our math teachers at the high school level.
We begin the show learning about our math team at the high school and welcoming in two of our high school math teachers, Zach McIntyre and Alex Swanson. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being on. Mr. McIntyre has been the coach of Chelmsford High School's math team for the previous six years, and taking over this season is Ms. Swanson. Mr. McIntyre, let me start with you. Can you tell the viewers exactly what is the math team? Sure. Uh, all year long, we try to find our ex, and the kids just want to know why. <laughs> but seriously, it's a club at the high school, and it, every week the kids get together and they study uh, more advanced math topics from Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Geometry, all the way up to Pre-Calc. And it's basically kids that have a passion for math. Great. Alex, what are some of the competitions that the math team participates in? Well, um, the math team has a couple different kinds of competitions that it competes in. Um, some of them are taken within the school, uh, which are American math competition. We also take the New England Math League competition in the school. Um, and we also take the Mandelbrot competition. Then we also have some other competitions where we get to travel, which is kind of neat. Um, so we have the Harvard MIT math competition, which is coming up in November, um, and that's going to be at Harvard. And then we have the Greater Boston Math League competition, where we recently hosted our first competition. Wow, a lot of events that you guys do. That's great. Yes. Zach, what are some of the benefits of being a member of the math team? Well, the topics covered are, are uh, way more advanced than their regular curriculum. Uh, you get to dive into things that are beyond anything that, that the kids would normally see in the regular everyday classroom. So it really gives the kids an edge and also s the, some of the freshmen um, get exposed to Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc before they even get to those courses. So they, that's really going to give them an edge down the line in high school as, as well as college math. Thank you. And Alex, as a new coach for the team, can you tell us a little bit about the competitions that you guys have done so far this year? Sure. Um, so far this year, we've had a really great, um, I guess, season, you could call it. Uh, we hosted our first math competition where Lexington, as well as Concord Carlisle, came to Chelmsford High School. Um, and it was an awesome competition. We had a great showing of students from all schools, um, as well as doing the New England Math League competition on a Tuesday recently, which students decided to come to and did a great job. And Zach, what about the practices? Can you tell us about a typical math team practice, what you guys do? Sure. Um, well, before me, there several coaches along over the course of many years have collected uh, all the prior competitions along with the answers. And there's, we have tons of binders of materials since the 1970s from all the previous years of these competitions. And so a typical practice would involve going over some random previous year's um, test and working through the math and, and sometimes collaboratively in groups. Um, we have a lot of the older math team participants coaching the younger ones. And, and um, that gives us an edge, I think, having all those materials because it's the, the, the problems are just so advanced that having an example, a template, something to go by is, is key and being good on the math team. Okay. We will now watch a promotional video of the math team that includes a motivational speaker, and we will return with one of the captains of the math team. We are back with Chelmsford High School math coaches Mr. McIntyre and Ms. Swanson, and now joined by math team captain Jeffrey Yu. Before we begin hearing from the captain, 
Let me ask you, Alex, about the motivational speaker from the math team video. Who was that? Oh, that was Dan Williams. He's a member of the math faculty at Chelmsford High School. Last year he appeared on Math with Matthew and was a little bit jealous knowing that he wouldn't be able to appear on this episode. So he weaseled his way into our show. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Swanson. So, Jeffrey, you're one of the captains on the uh, math team. Mm -hmm. What made you want to join the math team originally? Uh, so back in the eighth grade, um, some members from the high school math team at that time came over and they did a little activity with us and really got some students motivated about joining math team. So when high school came around, I went to the first meeting. Um, I was pretty impressed by all that it had to offer. Uh, I was extremely interested in all facets of the math team from learning new subjects to working with upperclassmen and just gaining more knowledge. And what role do you play as one of the captains of the math team? As one of the captains, I'm responsible for each weekly meeting, uh, making sure that everyone's prepared, making sure that we have problems to do. Um, occasionally, I or one of the other captains may teach a new subject that uh, the members may not know. Uh, but in general, I prepare them for competitions such as GBML, uh, Nemo, Mandelbrot, and so on. Excellent. And what do you and the other two captains trying to do this year to make the math team interesting from one week to the next? Yeah, so this year we're trying to uh, teach topics at meetings, um, mostly topics that they would not know from high school, such as binary numbers, uh, base numbers, and even some concepts that freshmen or sophomores may not have learned yet to better prepare them for the questions that may appear on a math competition. Also, we're trying to have captain's practices outside of weekly meetings and we're just going to go to the learning commons um, and just work on problems in a pretty friendly environment and they can ask questions and so on. Well, that's a great initiative. Have you ever have any inspiration or aspirations to being a math teacher? Uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, thank you all for coming on to share with us about Chelmsford High School's math team. Next, we will meet some of our math teachers that graduated from Chelmsford High School. Let's take a look back at these teachers when they were in high school and we will return to talk with them. It was great to see the high school yearbook photos of five of our Chelmsford High School math teachers from when they were students at the school. And we are joined now by three of those teachers, Mr. Robillard, Ms. Swanson, and Ms. Gaffney. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Ms. Swanson, thanks for being on again. And Ms. Gaffney. You're welcome. So, so let's start by asking about what the motivation was for each of you to teach at the school that you graduated from. Scott? Well, uh, you know, I knew I wanted to get into teaching, and uh, I loved Chumpster High School coming through here. Uh, I loved playing sports here, and it was just one of those things. I was comfortable with the teachers. I was comfortable with some of the people who were already here. Uh, Donna Foley was uh, one of my teachers when I was here, and uh, I just knew this was the right fit for me. Right. What about you, Alex? Um, I felt like Chumpster has an amazing community. There's always people who are there to help you. Uh, the math department in particular is an awesome group of people to work with. So I just couldn't wait to become part of the team. And Leah? I felt I had a great experience growing up in the community. I received an excellent education at Chelmsford. And I really saw it as an opportunity to give back to the community. And I would also talk about what Charlie Cleary calls the it factor. There's something special about Chumsford. There's so much to offer both academically and in terms of extracurriculars. So students really have a special connection and a special pride associated with Chumsford. Great, thank you. So let's talk about how the department is similar to when you guys graduated and how it's different. Let's start with Alex. So you've only graduated a few years ago, but what things do you see similar or different from a teacher perspective compared to when you were a student? Um, well, it's hard to know what it would have been like as a teacher years ago when I was here, but um, I certainly can see that the department has changed quite a bit. There's only a few teachers who are still here, um, great teachers. 
that were here when I was in school. Um, and there is a lot of young teachers who have a lot of life and um, excitement about what they're teaching. Right, what about from your perspective, Leah? Well, I think always the teachers have been very devoted and focused on their students. There have been a lot of changes in terms of technology. Um, we have software that we use in labs now. We have ever increasingly advanced uh, graphing calculators that are used in all of our courses. Um, we also incorporate a whole variety of uh, activities in the classroom. So there's really a lot more ways for students to look at problems and to answer problems. And we encourage that. Thanks. And what about you, Scott? Uh, one of the main differences I think you'd notice is that it's a complete turnaround. When I was here as a student, there was mainly male teachers in the math department. I think now you look at it, our department probably has five, five male teachers and the rest are female. So this, that's a big change. Um, it also is, when I was a student here, the math teachers were scattered throughout the building. Mm. So uh, I didn't see a lot of communication between the math teachers. Um, now I think that, I mean, the department eats together. They are in the same hallway, collaborating, sharing. So I think in that regard, it's a much closer department. Thank you. And let's talk about any of our current uh, math teachers in our department or former math teachers that might have inspired you to want to become a math teacher. Let's start with Leah. Well, there were many teachers that inspired me over the years. At uh, the high school level, Andrew Pasquale would stand out. He was my teacher for two years in a row, and I found he really just had a very special way of explaining things that was very clear, very calm, and encouraging to the students. And it's exciting to me that my students now have an opportunity to actually have him as their teacher. Thanks. Scott, what about you? Uh, well, none that are currently still here, but uh, Donna Foley, who I mentioned before, uh, she was my teacher in 10th grade. And I just, I really thrived in that class. I really enjoyed her class. I thought she was great. And it just worked out well that she was the coordinator when I started teaching. So that really uh, worked out to my benefit. And then Rebecca Nordegren, who I had uh, senior year, she just recently retired. Um, she was great. What a fun class. I always wanted to make sure I got back to be able to talk to her. I never thought I'd actually get back to be able to teach with her. So that was a great experience too. Great. And you, Alex? Um, I also have to say, most, I would say almost all of my teachers, if not all, were amazing. Um, I always felt challenged and like I was part of the community. Um, in particular, Scott was one of my teachers in middle school. I had him for both seventh and eighth grade. Um, I remember in eighth grade, I found out I was going to have him again and I was all excited. So he was definitely one of my favorites. Um, in high school, uh, Mr. Bradman, who's retired now, was another one of my, um, you know, most admired teachers. He really challenged me and taught me how to study for math and really work for what I was doing, which made me feel really proud. Oh, that's great. That's great. Thank you all for coming in to take a trip back to the days that you were a student at Chelmsford High School and giving us that interesting perspective. We will now move to a new segment on Math with Matthew for this season called Ask Math You. I gave Chelmsford High School parents the opportunity to ask any questions that they had about the mathematics department at the high school level and answer them for everyone. Let's go to our first question. Uh, what are the AP math courses uh, provided at CHS? We offer three different AP courses within the mathematics department at Chelmsford High School. We offer both the AB and the BC version of AP Calculus instructed by Mr. Pasquale who was featured on Math with Matthew last year. We offer AP Statistics with Mrs. Gaffney who will be on the show in a few minutes to discuss her course. And new this year, we are offering AP Computer Science with Mrs. Dulamis. We featured her Java programming course last season on Math with Matthew, and the course is transformed into AP Computer Science. Can you tell me about the IXL computer program? IXL Math is an online program that we began using at the end of last year within the high school math department. It offers online math practice with tutorial help in Algebra 1, Geometry and Algebra 2. Students use this program both in the computer lab during class time and can also access it at home. 
Although not all classes utilize the program, all the students have an account. Can you tell me about the course Intermediate Algebra and what it covers? Intermediate Algebra is a hybrid course that covers the end of Algebra 1 and the beginning of Algebra 2. Previous to the Common Core, most of the 8th grade students took an Algebra course that covered most of the Algebra 1 skills. And so the ninth grade course continued with these Algebra skills and moved towards Algebra 2. So what kind of support can I offer my child when they're struggling with their homework? There are a few options here. The first is to use Khan Academy. It is a free resource that has videos and practice for all mathematical skills and concepts. As previously mentioned, we also have the IXL program for student use. Finally, some teachers have begun the process of creating their own videos to, for students to watch at home. All right. Let's take some time now to learn about our AP Statistics program as we welcome back Chelmsford High School teacher, Mrs. Gaffney. Welcome back, Mrs. Gaffney. Thank you. AP Statistics is a relatively new course at Chelmsford High School. How did it all get started? Well, it started in January of 2010. I had a group of eight very talented students that wanted to learn AP Statistics and actually take the exam that May. So it was an ambitious undertaking, but we were able to make it work. We set up a room in the Learning Commons during one of my planning periods, and the students did work really hard. We learned a lot, and they took the test as planned, and the following year became an official course. So how is AP Statistics different from the other courses that we offer at Chelmsford High School? Well, just about everything we do in AP Statistics is a real-life application. I never get the question that we often hear in other math classes, when am I going to use this in real life? So there are a whole variety of applications that we do cover, for example, sports, medicine, business, political science, psychology, entertainment. Currently, all eyes in Massachusetts are on the Red Sox, so as another example, we could use stats to analyze the performance of individual players as well as the teams. So what are some of the prerequisites necessary to be able to take AP Statistics? Well, students need to have successfully completed advanced algebra at either the H2 or the honors level and have a strong work ethic. For students coming from H2, they should generally have a 90 or higher, and students coming from honors, an 80 or higher. And is there another option available for students who are interested in statistics but maybe not at the AP level? Yes, uh, we also have an Introduction to Statistics course. That started back in 2008. It's offered as a single semester course, and it's taught at the H2 level. Uh, that is intended to give students an exposure to topics that they would later see in a college course. It's worth uh, noting that it's not a prereq for the AP course, but I have found that some students do take it first, and it has sparked interest and also helped them in the later course. And then I've had kids come back from college and actually tell me that the intro course has helped them in their college course. Oh, that's great. So why should students be taking AP Statistics? Well, most students, regardless of what they're majoring in college, will have to take a statistics course. So offering it at the high school level gives them a chance to do that in advance. It also gives them an opportunity to earn college credit and potentially opt out of a college requirement. It's also very hands-on at the high school level, so I think that's what makes it really fun and interesting. Well, in a moment, we're going to go to a promotional video of AP Statistics. Can you tell us a little bit of preview of what we're going to see in this video? Yes, in the first part of the video, uh, you will be seeing some of my students doing a chemistry lab. They were actually investigating the percent copper in a penny, doing a hypothesis test on that. Later in the video, you'll be seeing some of the student presentations of their final projects. All right, let's take a moment and look at this video, and then we'll be back to hear more with Mrs. Gaffney on AP Statistics.
there's strong evidence to conclude that there is a difference in mean point. Welcome back. We're here again with Mrs. Gaffney learning about AP statistics. Ms. Gaffney, can you tell me about the projects and the presentations that we just saw in that video clip? Sure. The students are required to do both a mid-year and a final project in the course, and that basically involves them identifying a question that they choose that they're interested in. They then go off and they collect data, being careful to follow sampling design methods and make sure that their sample is representative of what they're trying to study. They perform statistical analyses and answer the original question. And these have covered a whole wide variety of topics. So in the video, as examples, we had one group that was looking at uh, the death penalty in various states across the country and whether or not there was a difference in murder rates in states with and without the death penalty. We had another group that was looking at NBA athletes and NCAA athletes and their free throw percentage rates. And a third group was actually interested in looking at the preferences of students at CHS. That's often a popular choice for the, for the um, projects, to look at students at our school. And they were in particular looking at student preferences for math science courses compared to English history courses and whether there was a difference based on gender. What are some of the other activities that are done within AP Statistics? Well, there are many activities that are integrated throughout the curriculum. Um, I'll give some examples. So when we study sampling design methods, the students actually collect samples from a made-up species of jellyfish. And they're actually able in that way to see how the different sampling techniques work and to identify sources of bias. When we study probability, we have um, some dice game investigations that we look at, and there's also a coin demonstration. When we study sampling distribution models, which is one of the more complex concepts in the course, we actually collect samples using um, a thumbtack where the students have to toss the tack and see how many times it lands pin up. And we then pull the class data and actually create the samples and the students are able to see what happens as they generate more trials or as the sample size increases. So these have been really valuable because they enable the students to experience the concepts firsthand. And how have the students done on the AP exam within your course? They've done really well. On the AP exam, the scores range from 1 to 5, with 5 being the highest. Last year, we had the most number of 5s ever. Of the 50 students at CHS that took the exam, we had 17 that earned scores of 5. And 90% of the students earned a score of 3 or higher, which is what we would consider a qualifying score. In addition, um, compared to all the students who took the exam globally, our percentages of fours and fives were approximately double. So I've been very pleased and the students have really um, felt that they were very prepared for the AP exam when they've come back to me after the test. Yeah, and it should be noted that each year the average score of the AP statistics has increased since the course has been created, which is a credit to both the students and you teaching the course. So congratulations for that. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mrs. Gaffney, for this great insight into the AP statistics course. We will be right back to conclude the show after this promotional video. Hi, I'm Dr. Linda Hirsch, host of Literacy with Linda. Catch my show daily at 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 2 p.m., and 5 p.m. And I'm Dr. Matthew Bayronavon, the host of Math with Matthew, shown daily at 8.30, 11.30, 2.30, and 5.30 on channel 22 Comcast and 36 Verizon. You're going to want to watch my show first. Well, I don't think they have much of a choice because your show is on before my show. Yeah, but my show's much better. Actually, they really want to watch my show. No, actually, you're going to want to watch my show. Hold on, hold on. It's all about math with Matthew. No, no, pick me. Uh, yes, no, uh, math with no, Matthew is on every day at 8.30, 11.30, 2.30, and 5.30. Catch it. Thanks, for everyone, for watching the show today. Thank you to all the guests for being on the show. Thank you to Mr. Peterson and his crew for producing the show. Thanks to Anne-Marie Fiore, Dr. Frank Tiano, and everyone at CTM. We'll see you for our second episode of Math with Matthew, Middle School Edition, this winter. Thanks, everyone.